in Brazil, the heated presidential election will go to a second round. Former President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva failed to secure the majority needed for a victory in the first round. He'll face off against current President Jair Bolsonaro in a runoff on October 30th. So for more on this, we want to bring in uh, Beatriz Correra. She is an international editor for Bando Bandorones. I don't think I said that properly, but I hope you'll forgive me. Bandorones. Um, so let us talk about this really uh, interesting election season. I think a lot of people may not have been following what's going on, except where they're waking up right now. So I want you to set the scene. People would have been familiar with Bolsonaro, right-wing uh, candidate, uh, often compared to Donald Trump. And then this other candidate who was formerly president, who's more of a left-wing candidate. Who are they? What has the campaign been like? And who's supporting the two candidates? Good morning, Emery. Uh, well, basically, it, it was the results are what we were expecting. Uh, the two candidates uh, leading the polls were to a second round, although uh, some polls had suggested that Lula was going to win in the first round. So Lula, is uh, he was president for eight years, and he was in jail for uh, 560 days during the last year. But last year, uh, uh, the Supreme Court has annulled the convictions against him, and he was free to run this election because the last election, he was in jail. So he couldn't run against Bolsonaro last election. So last election, we had Fernando Haddad against Bolsonaro representing Lula and the left. But this election, we had uh, Lula himself racing against Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro is a right-wing uh, candidate who leads lead the country the last three and a half years. And he was trying to get a second round. He has often said that the polls was misleading and the, the electoral system here in Brazil was not trustable. And he was uh, saying this even last night. He said there was some allegations of fraud. And, but of, of course, these allegations are not taken seriously. The electoral voting system in Brazil is trustable. And the results were, we, we knew the results in some hours, but he says that to this a uh, small uh, portion of the electorate in Brazil that still believes that there's some uh, uh, chance of rigging the election. Mm. So that's what we are going to see in the second round. Uh, Bolsonaro against Lula, uh, left-wing uh, candidate, trying to achieve the vote in the center of the dispute, and Bolsonaro trying to, to come to, to the center because the two candidates that was in third and fourth place they were uh, in center, center left and center right. So they are going to try to achieve this vote, although are like a small portion of the vote, Simone Tebet and Ciro Gomez. Ciro had 3% of the vote, Simone had 4% of the vote, but these votes are going to be decisive for uh, deciding who is going to be Brazil's next president. So I know, Bolsonaro, you talked about the polls suggesting that Bolsonaro was going to be trailing by more than he has been. Um, and he's ca he called the polls lies. Uh, and I'm curious about the impact of misinformation during this election, because I know that was a big issue during the last election. Yeah, and last night, what Bolsonaro said, the first one of the, the first things he said is that he proved the polls was a, the polls were a lie, but that's not correct. Actually, the the result for President Lula was more or less uh, accurate because some polls had suggested he could win in the first round. But we have to remind that the, these polls uh, we have a margin of error, so it's two percent, uh, two points uh, of margin of error. So if you take that in place. You, uh, you will see that the results for Lula was accurate. He had 48% of the vote. Some who suggested he could have 50%. And others, uh, uh, 49, 48. So it's more, like, uh, more or less the uh, accurate. But for Bolsonaro, some institutes had given him 8, 11 points less than what he had. 
we we are trying to guess what happened. Uh, with the the analysts are still struggling to understand that. But one of the things that they are they are saying is that many people thought that neither Ciro Gomes nor uh, Simone Tebet had the chance to beating uh, Lula in the second round. So they uh, just uh, anticipated the vote they were going to to do in Bolsonaro in the second round for now, because they don't want Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva as president again. So this uh, right-wing uh, voter just uh, anticipated the vote they would give in the second round, given the chance that Lula would, uh, could win in the first round. So that's one of the things the analysts are saying. Another thing is that when we have Brazil's population, we don't have an accurate picture of how it is right now, because we were supposed to do the census uh, after 10 years, but we didn't. So we, we have a picture of Brazil population of 12 years ago, not 10. Mm. And with that, it's difficult for the institute to project the, the, the votes where you, you interview right. uh, people in many cities, but you don't have the accurate, you don't know religion, and race and how right, the details. It's a picture of 12 years ago. That makes a lot of yeah. sense. Uh, well, Beatrice, we will be watching the next round of the elections closely. Thank you very much. You're welcome.